Did you know that almost all challenges first got there and still get there with three champions accounting for 75% of their games? And if you're gonna have three champions go across that many games, you need a main champion, a second champion, as well as a spare one, just in case of meta changes, nerfs, buffs, and of course banning. And as the games and champions change with metas, so will those OP picks within that rotation. That's why multi-season challenges normally have at least 50% of their games on three champions as they climb each year, and those three can change all the time. And yes, they get there with different champions, different roles, different playstyles. But the thing that they all have in common across the board is they have a cool champion pool. What I'm going to do for you in this video is help you obviously from the jungle perspective, but it will apply to everybody, to make your own champion pool and enable you to have the best chance for success to get the challenger to really buff up your LP. But before we do that, Ross has a message. Hello, have you ever wanted to get buffed like me? Well, that's just not possible because of how glorious I am. But you can still play games and earn through buff.game. Buff is a loyalty program that rewards gamers simply for playing. As an authorized app of Overwolf, you can play and earn points from League of Legends to Valorant and more. And then you take these shiny buff points and you exchange them for Steam credit, Riot Point cards, skins, game keys, and way, way more. It's as if you get a pentakill level 1 and watch the orbs flow through you. Notice the new skin? All from Buff. In addition, Buff supports video recording highlights, which will automatically record the highlights while you play. You can edit them and post them to your Buff profile in the app, so that everyone can see how amazing you are. I grasped. Available for free worldwide. Download Buff with a link in the description below to play and earn. First, we're going to talk about why this is exactly important and how it will categorically make you climb faster than you've ever climbed before. And then we'll go ahead and teach you exactly how to construct your champion wall so you can realize your dreams of dreams. Now, as of course we are talking about this, it doesn't really apply to pro players as much because they are the best of the best. And while I'm sure most of them can play a lot of different champions, there's this unwritten rule that they need the pro metas to be as boring as possible every year and, you know, always play Jace top lane at Worlds. But in theory, they could obviously adjust as necessary for their team requirements. That means in Challenger and in solo queue in general, there's high priority on the meta at the very peak. As player strength is closer, champion strength makes much more of a difference. Whereas down in silver and emerald and diamond and gold, wherever you are, the gap between you and the enemy player will be the largest determinant factor in whether or not you win. As such, that means champion pool also changes a lot more at the higher tiers of play based upon Riot Games deciding whether or not something should exist. This is even more true for Master and Grandmaster. Players need to lean on being good at their respective champions and kind of hope that they don't get gutted for no particular reason. Whereas just to get to Master tier, you don't need to worry about that because if you are good and you are the best and you are consistently improving on your champions, you love their playstyle and so on, you can get to Master tier with those three. You never need to swap out. Of course, as 3 does seem to be the sweet spot for most players, allowing a lot of that versatility I mentioned, there are obviously one tricks that have gone pro, there are one tricks that get challenged every year, there are one tricks that just understand everything about the game. Now, the same reason that one tricks are able to get to challenger in high elo with their champion is the same reason good players in general are able to climb to challenger in high elo using a champion pool. That's because there's straight up just less to learn overall. You know your champions now, all three, at a very high level, and now you can focus on your role, the matchups, and the general how to play the game. You rely on muscle memory in those tight scenarios where maybe you made a mistake decision-making-wise, but your mechanics, because you don't have to think about it, allows you to come out of that situation. Whereas if you go for a really good invade, like the Silas does, and then you make a mechanical misplay against the Kha'Zix, you die, and he gets to win the game. And the same thing happens a little bit later. And so when you nail down that tight champion pool to three champions, or, you know, if you want to one-trick, go for it, but obviously please dodge if it's banned, you're going to have quicker results. I guarantee you, you look at any of these new accounts that climb, you go ahead and look at the best successful players, you just pull up their profile page, you go, ah, low champion pool size. You go look at someone that's stuck, that's complaining, that's struggling, that wants to blame their team, that says, look, why can I not climb? And you'll see an absolutely ridiculous amount of champions played. Look, I'll go make two to collect the footage for this video, go find a random profile, click on it, and record a screen capture showing you how many champions. I have no idea who this is, if it's you, I'm sorry, but you played too many champions. The downsides, obviously, to this kind of focused style of climbing is that, yes, you can get bored if you didn't pick the right three champions, or you get bored if you want trick. It can be less fun over the course of 500 to 1,000 games, whether that takes you six months, one day, or 10 years to play, doesn't matter. But if you don't find those champions fun, you will get bored at the repetition. But the repetition is what's going to allow you to climb better and faster. And obviously you can get tilted and more frustrated easily in those situations when you're not enjoying yourself. And maybe your champion's just a little bit weak and you have to climb a little bit more like Sisyphus than, you know, just like a regular person running downstream playing Graves without thinking, you know what I mean? 
Now, here's the thing about climbing in general that I think is a good principle for you guys to understand is that you always play catch up. The first time you get challenger, the first time you get master tier, the first time you get diamond or platinum or silver, you are playing catch up against players who have been there for a bit longer. They've been playing more. Now, in theory, you think you are the same rank as them. That's not exactly true. They have experience, gameplay, knowledge. They understand the rank that they're in and they're stable. What they have not done is gotten good enough to actually climb out of it, but they've proven that they belong. What happens when you first get there is you just got a good streak, you put it all together. But staying there and getting there are totally different things. So in theory, you have to catch up with that unless, of course, you are subscribed to the Vrakaido GG School of Thought and maybe you just have the great knowledge and you'll climb right through it very quickly. But that is way harder to do when you're spreading yourself across many champions and many roles. So junglers, focus the hell down. And I was going to say, you know, top laners stay in your lane, but honestly, top laners, mid laner supports, I honestly think you could leave your lanes a lot more and you probably just climb a lot more that way, you know. So once you've nailed this down, understand that concept. What also becomes an issue is free time. People at the top of the ladder play thousands of games of League. And obviously a lot of us have jobs, schools, girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, dogs, cats, goldfish, lingering bacterial infections we need to take care of. Or in Dudes' case, he's got a knock on the door of someone who keeps drilling at 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. on the wall. That takes a lot of energy and time. But when you do have the time, use it well. So it doesn't matter if you can get it three games a week, three games a day, five games a month. Doesn't matter. If you lock down your champion pool and you play with this direct purpose, you will have success. Now, one last thing before we talk about champion pools is that you have to understand that most other people will main a champion or two, get really good at those. And if you just stuck it okay with like five champions, they're really great at two. So if you go into champions like someone instantly locks in, you know, Belveth jungle in the enemy team, and then you're like, well, you know, I play five champions. I think this one's great against Belveth. But they're a one trick or a two trick, and you're a guy who's like a five trick, and you're not really nearly as good at any of your champions as they are at Belveth. Guess what? You're going to be eviscerated. And as much as people can, you know, mock my champions, the game is competitive. This is what people do. And that's why I can beat a 200 LP Balveth jungler with Kaiser jungle. Because I actually know Kaiser very well. I don't just play it a little bit and be like, yeah, you know, I can play Balveth, you know, with Kaiser. You can't. It's terrible. But I know the limits. So how do we achieve the goal we want by nailing down our champion pool in the right way? Well, first, you have to understand that there's one tricking, there's meta, and there's just main roles where you customize your own little champion niche and you hopefully don't have them be too weak against the meta or, you know, too strong where they're picked and banned away. And again, even if you play meta, even if you play the custom champion pool, what happens is when you add three to them, you become masters of them and you have to go ahead and learn another one. I've made videos on how you can learn champions. I'll leave one below. But ideally, then you can substitute one of those out, bring a new one in. And every year, as long as you bring a new one into your meta, or your custom champion pool with a main role, or you even replace your one trick, every year you're cycling in a new champion. And over like a few seasons, you'll end up with an actual champion pool that's really, really damn good of like six to 10 champions. So you start off with three and you kind of use three for 75% of your games, but you can always substitute one in and out based upon which you feel is better against the meta. So this is not only a short-term strategy to climb faster, it's also a long-term strategy to climb faster. Now we need to understand how these three types work, the pros and cons, and ultimately champion pools are the cornerstone of a player's personality, of your versatility as well as your adaptability. One tricking makes you go deep into the mastery of a single champion, understanding its mechanics, the matchup, the one-way perspective. On the flip side, maining more than one champion can offer a more broad perspective of the game, making you a better player and allowing you to thrive in diverse situations while still mastering your selected champions. So in essence, what I'm saying is when you're playing a meta pool or a custom pool, Take the mentality of a one trick to those champions. Because you're spreading it out, obviously you're not gonna have the same depth as quickly, but you will still master your champions pretty quickly. The downside of meta pools is that something can be nerfed really quickly. You don't get to master fast enough. Now it's gone, you have to replace it. So you're constantly doing this roller coaster. You're being offset by the power of the champion based upon Riot's decision making. So you don't need to be as good at your champion when you play a meta pool than you do when you make a custom pool or a one trick pool. For example, people tell me, hey, you can't first pick Mundo jungle, Zyra jungle. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I know how to play it into literally every single composition and how to make it work with our composition. That's because I one tricked them in essence to become damn good at them and added them into my custom pool. Meta champion pools will not have that. And that is my personal advice. When you make your custom pool of your three champions that have some sort of synergy, which we'll go over in a second, make sure you play them as if you are one tricking them. You just blind pick them in every scenario, you span them, and when they get banned or picked away, you pick another one, you do the same thing. It'll be a little rougher for the first month or two compared to a meta champion pool, but when you come out at the end, it will be stronger. 
And obviously the meta champion pool people won't need to know their champions as well because they will just be better in the game. They will have better itemization, better stats, better suitability to what the game is. And so the first and foremost question you must ask yourself is, what do you enjoy? What are you good at? Identify what aspects of your personality enjoys a champion's design, their aesthetics, if you're meta, you just need to understand, you know, what are you good at and what suits your play style, and you don't need that personal preference nonsense. Do you like tanks, mages, ADCs? Do you like playing fighters? Do you like kiting, 1v1s, 3v5s, team fights? Do you like CSing, jungle tracking, pressing E shields like an Ivern? Do you like lane ganking? Do you hate lane ganking? Do you like only objectives and hate champions? Again, I will have the video linking to this, how you choose your champion below, but please understand that you should know at this point which styles do I like. Now it's okay to have one of each and have like three different styles. It's also great to double down on a style. So for example, you should ask the next question, how do you want to play the game? Do you want to scale, play strong early, split push, team fight? Think about that, roaming, not roaming. And again, yes, this works for junglers. So in theory, let's just say you pick Xin Shao because you love spears and then you wanted to maintain that style no matter what you played and you wanted to add another two. Well, obviously we need something that's great early, a lot of ganking pressure, probably go with an Elise. And your third choice can be something radically different to suit the needs of your team or the enemy matchup, or it can be something exactly the same. So we can just go with, you know, Rek'Sai. Or you could pick something that's a bit more skillful, that's a bit more fused between all the roles and go with a Lee Sin. Alternatively, you could just be a savant and lover of farming. So you pick the Karthus, you pick the Fiddlesticks, you pick the Lilia, you pick the Hecarim, you pick the FK Farming Graves, you pay nothing unless it's a farmer. You can do that too. This adds a little bit of versatility to your champion pool by, you know, giving you some AP damage as well, which is always useful if you need to flex one way or the other. But you could also just say, you know what, I prefer the snowballing aspect, I just want to be better late game, better in team fights, rather than just really strong early. Well then let's go for a Viego. Your aggression will be rewarded on that champion, but you will scale a lot better than the other two, even if, you know, Xin Chao's pretty damn strong at the moment. He might not be when you watch this video in a few months. You can do it again, in my particular case, I like having radically different play styles. You know, I've got my Zyra, which of course I brought into the jungle, but I've always played, I've got a million odd points on her. Got the Orn, same thing, Volibear, same thing. I've got their tank, I've got a fighter, I've got a mage. I can suit any need. But I've also done this over the years for Rengar, and he's been in the pool and I can bring him back whenever. I've done it for Kindred. I've played Echo, I've played Maokai back in Season 7 when he was, you know, really good then to support the Arden Sensa meta. I did it with Kaiser Jungle, I like my off-meta picks as well, that makes things a lot more difficult for me, but because I always approach it, hey, what new champion do I want to get at least Master Tier with this year, I add them to my pool permanently, because I'm able to learn them and use them to get back to my ranks, and not only use them as a filler. And when you do it this way over the course of a few years, now you have 15 to 20 champions, you can just pick from whenever. But if you like an absolute singular game style, you can do the same thing and just have 10 really dominant early game jungles that you like to play and that's it. If you're a farming jungler, then you can go ahead and say, look, I love playing Karthus, he's my best champion. What else can I play? Should he be banned? Well, you know what? I just love Nunu's character. I love everything about Willem. I have Willem hats and memorabilia. My whole room is blue. My life is blue. Dabadi, Dabadai, 1999. So I'm going to pick Nunu as my second pick. And in fact, Nunu's actually my first pick. It's just Karthus is a way better champion in the jungle at the moment for solo carrying. But who knows? Nunu is my spirit animal and I'll always play him and keep him in the pool. And for my third pick, I can always pick something that's a little bit of a fusion. I can pick a Lilia to match the farming tempo of the Karthus. I can play a Rek'Sai for the early game damage. I can do the Volibear for the turret diving tanky fighteriness. The choice is really are yours. You could even add in a Kindred to kind of combine a little bit of that map pressure from Nunu with the hybrid snowballing and solar carry potential of the Karthus. So what all of those examples have in common is that we are thinking about the transfer of skills. Now there's a one-to-one -one transfer of skills like only ganking junglers, only farming junglers, only snowballing top laners, only tank top laners, only enchanted supports. And that's great because you will always understand how to play those particular roles as you select those champions. So the rationale here is it's better to pick one backup champion that's very, very similar in playstyle, and your third one can be the one that's a little bit different. That's a good core understanding to use. As long as you like their kit and you like the thematic and you like the way they play, that will never, ever steer you wrong. But as you've seen from some of these examples, like my ridiculous one that's all kinds of different star types, there's also different philosophies too, but that is more difficult, and that's only if you truly like playing different roles. If you just absolutely love playing ganking junglers and you're the best at them, don't even add a farming jungle to your pool. Sure, it'll make you better in the long run, but will it help you climb and do you even enjoy it? So remember, as you strive to climb in Season 14, ideate, reflect, and think about which three champions you want to come with you on the ride. Know which ones you can use in the off-roll situation as well. If you get filled another role, what are you going to use? Maybe on that off-roll, you could just have two champions as a backup. You don't have to be supreme with them, but just know that you have to lock them in and play when you can't dodge.
Pick something with a similar philosophy, something easy that you can play. Don't pick something left field. Like if you're an early game jungler and you're full top lane, don't just pick Malphite tanking. You don't know how to tank. You're not very good at it, maybe. So why waste your time in others? If you're one trick, you know what to do. Have your backup one trick or dodge. And if you're a meta champion pool player, while I hope your champion stays as strong as possible and you don't have to swap them out too much, but as always be ready to do so. And that's where you need to stay on top of how to play your champion and how to play jungle in general. And for that, this video will guide you truly to becoming a god.